Hi, I'm Matt Schaefer, and this is the DevOps Screencast. This is the first episode of the Screencast, so while I haven't nailed down the format yet, I plan to cover a range of topics including infrastructure automation, systems level concepts, and Unix tutorials. Today we'll be talking about the basics of Chef Solo. Chef is a server configuration framework written in Ruby. Using Chef, we can configure various software packages automatically. The recipes we, can, we build can then be reused against any machine to ensure uniformity across all your servers. Chef works in two modes, Chef Server and Chef Solo. Today, we'll talk about Chef Solo, and we'll cover Chef Server in future screencasts. In Chef Solo, there's no separate server. It's just your development machine and your server. You develop your cookbooks and recipes locally on your development machine. Then, you copy the cookbooks and any other configuration information up to your server using SCP or rsync. Then, you invoke the Chef Solo command on the server. The Chef Solo command will then run through all the recipes you specified in your node configuration file. As you can see, this process is somewhat manual, but there are a handful of tools you can use to make building and running your recipes a little easier. Today, we'll use Knife Solo. Knife Solo is a plugin for Knife, which is the main command line utility that you'll use to drive Chef. I just recently released Knife Solo, so you may encounter some bugs. If you do, please let me know. There are other tools that might help with this job that you might want to try out, like Spatula, Little Chef, or Soloist. Writing your own is also fairly straightforward. We'll start by installing Knife Solo. Knife Solo adds a few extra commands to Knife that make working with Chef Solo a little bit easier. If this is the first time you're using Chef, the install might take a little bit of time since this also has to install the Chef gem. Also, since this is the first time we're using Chef, we have to create a knife configuration file. The commands I specify here just set up some basic defaults. Since we're only using Chef Solo, we don't really need the knife configuration, but knife can be a little bit noisy if the configuration is completely non-existent. Now, I'll use the knife kitchen command to create a directory called solo demo that will hold the files we'll use during this project. As you can see, there's a handful of directories here. For today, we'll mainly focus on the cookbooks and the nodes directories, and we'll go over the other directories in more detail later. Often you can find cookbooks for various packages online. Opscode, the company that created Chef, maintains a cookbook repository on GitHub. 37signals and other companies are beginning to do the same. While these cookbooks don't always work for your particular environment, they at least provide good examples and starting points. Today, we'll keep things simple and just install an Nginx server. We could use the Opscode cookbook, but we'll make one from, one from scratch to get some practice working with cookbooks. To create a cookbook, use the knife com cookbook command. We specify the name of the cookbook, Nginx, and use the dash O option to tell knife to store it in the cookbooks directory. Each cookbook contains a default recipe. We'll use this recipe to install and start the Nginx server. Chef uses a Ruby DSL to define recipes. But before we start coding it, we'll have a look at what we want to do. I've prepared a minimal Ubuntu system running on VirtualBox that we use to work through this installation. If you need pointers on creating your own, I have a blog post that goes over the process. Or you can download the image from the link that you see here. Now before we can run any recipes on our VM, we have to install Chef Solo on it. To do that, we use the knife prepare command. This is a knife solo command that will install Ruby and Chef so that we can run Chef Solo. This can take a little bit of time, so I've sped it up here. It also generates an empty node configuration for the host. This file tells Chef which recipe should run on a given host. To include the Nginx recipe, we add recipe nginx to the run list array. Now to run the recipe, we'll use the knife cook command. We specify the username and the host. This will copy all of our cookbooks over and run them using knife solo. Now of course this didn't do anything yet because we haven't written the recipe. 
We want to install Nginx, but first we'll take a look at the machine to find out what the package name is. To do that on Ubuntu, we use app cache search Nginx. And in this case, the package name is just Nginx. To tell Chef to install that package, we'll use what the package resource and specify the name. Now the package resource works across operating systems, but the package names can change. So sometimes you'll need conditionals in here if you want your recipe to work across many different operating systems. We cook again. And now if we go back to the browser and put in the IP address, we'll see that Nginx is installed, but not yet running. So now we'll look back at the box to see how to start it. Now the Nginx package installs a standard Etsy and NitD Nginx script that we can use to query status, start, and stop the Nginx server. We can tell Chef about this script by using the service resource. Now by default, Chef will attempt to inspect the process table to see whether or not Nginx is running. Instead, we'll use the supports command to tell Chef that we have a script that supports the status command. We'll save our file and then rerun cook. Click. Now if we go back to the browser, we'll see that Nginx still isn't running. The reason is the service resource only tells Chef that the service exists. It doesn't tell what to do with it. So we'll go back to our recipe and give it an action. In this case, action start. Cook again. And now we'll see that we have Nginx running with a nice friendly welcome message. Now, this is interesting, but the really cool part about Chef is being able to rerun these recipes on any machine. To simulate that, I'm going to roll the virtual machine back to a snapshot that I took before I started recording. Start the machine back up. And because Chef isn't installed on this machine, we'll rerun prepare. Now that the box is prepared, we'll rerun cook. But before we do that, let's refresh the browser and make sure that we don't have Nginx running. There's no tricks here. Rerun cook. It copies the recipes that we just wrote up to the box and runs them using Chef Solo. Now if we refresh the browser, we get our welcome message again. And that's it. We'll go over more of the details in upcoming screencasts, but hopefully this is enough to get you started exploring Chef for your own servers. In our next episode, we'll talk about Chef Server, which lets you take these same recipes and scale them up to many more nodes. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.